Hey, peeps, freaks, and geeks, you're listening to Rant and Radio Infection. This is your host, DJ Raven, keeping it sexy for over 21 years. What you know about that? The topic of the day is Soul Calibur 3 for the PlayStation 2. Let's begin. It's all my thugs in the heat, eh? I'ma hold it down, my knees, eh? It's all my man, the epic, it's all my man, man, man. It's all my thugs in the heat, eh? I'ma hold it down, my knees, eh? Hey, welcome to the first edition of the Video Game Vault. Welcome to Ranting Radio Infection, and this is your host, DJ Raven. Let's begin right now. PlayStation 2 released a game in 2005 called Soul Calibur 3, an incredible fighting game franchise from Namco, the same company who created a legendary fighting game series, Tekken. Now, the first Soul Calibur came out around 97, 98 for the arcades and the Sega Dreamcast. At that time, it was arguably the greatest fighting game of all time. The 1990s was definitely the peak of the fighting game era and the genre itself. Now, that game had incredible, amazing, beautiful graphics, gameplay, the soundtrack. It was a complete, perfect fighting game. And of course, because the Dreamcast flopped not too soon after that, they decided to make the Soul Calibur sequels for the other systems. Now, the second Soul Calibur came out for the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, and the GameCube, respectively. Each three versions was slightly different. Namco decided, hey, we need a bigger demographic, we want to draw more audiences, so let's introduce them to all three systems and three different types of fans. The Soul Calibur 2 game featured three new characters that was only exclusive to each system. Number one, for the Xbox, they included Spawn. Spawn is a comic book character from the 90s. He was a very famous anti-hero slash superhero character. His comic books were very dark. Arguably, he is the most famous black superhero of all time because ethnically he is African. African American, I should say, because his nationality is American. His job is to be an assassin. What he does is he kills people for a living. He was part of the military. I think he was in Vietnam, one of those wars where he killed a lot of people. Anyway, he ended up getting killed in his story. And in the comic books, he was kind of resurrected as this Spawn character. He made a deal with the devil that he'll lead his army. But the problem was, Spawn didn't really want to lead the devil's army. He wanted to go his own way. So instead, he ends up on Earth, some kind of purgatory type ghetto neighborhood where he might kill or help the people around him. He is an anti-hero in the sense that only he cares about himself, you know. But he does care about certain people, especially his family. Now, Spawn was very famous. So, because the Xbox did not have a mascot, they decided to use Spawn, okay? A very famous American figure. When it came to the Nintendo version of Soul Calibur 2, because Nintendo had a lot of mascots, they decided to go with Link. Link is from the Zelda series. Y'all know Link with the sword and the hat and the green outfit. He is a very famous icon, and of course, I don't really need to explain much more about him, except the fact that his version sold the most copies. But that's not really, really surprising, is it? Because, you know, Link is extremely popular, and the Nintendo fans bought up copies of the Soul Calibur 2. It sold the most copies of the version. Very embarrassingly, the Soul Calibur 2 version of the PlayStation 2 was pretty weak. Their exclusive character was a guy named Heihachi. Who is Heihachi? Heihachi is an old geriatric guy, kind of a tyrant, kind of an empirical figure, and he is the grandfather of the Jin Kazama fighter. Jin Kazama is the oh, the poster boy of the Tekken series, I guess. So anyway, Heihachi is included in the PlayStation 2 version. However, since he's already Namco, and you know, they already have a Tekken slash Soul Calibur crossover character named Yoshimitsu. Yoshimitsu appears in both franchises, both Soul Calibur and Tekken. So including Heihachi is kind of derivative. 
why not include somebody a little bit more original? Why not include somebody who isn't from the Namco universe? I would have preferred somebody like Kratos. Unfortunately, Kratos wasn't invented around the time that Soul Calibur 2 came out. So, anyway, now leading into Soul Calibur 3. I think the main reason why Soul Calibur 3 was only exclusive to the PlayStation 2 is because Soul Calibur 2 sucks so bad for the PlayStation 2. And I think Sony felt like, hey, you know what, Namco? Your version sucked for us. You know, Nintendo outshined us, Nintendo's version. Um, even Xbox's version was a little bit more interesting. So what the hell? All you gave to us was Heihachi. So I think that Namco, this is just my assumption, Namco decided to buy out Soul Calibur 3. They probably paid an offer the most money to Namco. And maybe not Namco felt obligated to Sony because who knows, you know, maybe Sony was just that powerful and because of the Japanese connection. We all know that Namco is a Japanese company and so is Sony. Perhaps this is why Namco decided to go with them. Um, I could be wrong, but anyway, that's just an assumption. Let's let's look at the character designs though. This is very interesting to me. Soul Calibur 3 comes out only for the PlayStation 2. Their new characters include Zasalamel, Setska, and Tira. Three new characters. How interesting. Let's look at Soul Calibur 2. Soul Calibur 2 had three different characters for each version. Now that's very interesting. That's not the only interesting thing, folks. Let's take a look closer at Zasalamel, okay? Zasalamel is a black guy with a cloak, mysterious figure that carries around a scythe. It gets more interesting. In fact, he is the boss of the game. He turns into another character called Abyss, basically his alter ego. Abyss is kind of an undead creature. He's got spikes and a charred face, and he looks almost like out of this world. Almost like a character out of, hmm, let's say, a comic book? Hmm. Look at his character design. Okay, now compare this guy to, let's say, hmm, another undead character, a superhero-esque character, that is a black person. Hmm. Spawn? Yeah. I think that rings a freaking bell. They ripped off Spawn from Soul Calibur freaking 2, the Xbox version. How appropriate. <laughs> it's very interesting because they create Zasalamel, who is essentially just, you know, a ripoff of Spawn. It's amazing. Two undead characters, um, African descent, you know, black guys, um, badasses, and... You know, both are very mysterious type figures. Very, very interesting. I think this was Namco's way of saying, Hey, Sony, you know what? We can do this for you too, you know. Um, you know, Xbox had Spawn and, y you know, this is our way of making it up, okay? You, you want another, you want more proof? Okay, let's look at this. Tira. One of the other new characters is Tira. She is basically a woman with a green leafy outfit and carries around what I call a ring of death or a circle of death. Her weapon is this circle blade. It's a strange weapon anyway. But looking at her character design, look at this. She wears green, okay? Green all around. And even her hair is green. From afar, now, just, just, just listen to me. From afar, if you kind of look at her, you know, you might mistake her for, oh, I don't know, somebody who wears green, somebody who has a gr leafy outfit. Link from the Nintendo version of Soul Calibur 2? Oh my god! What they did was they ripped off Link! Can you believe this? They ripped off Link. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious to me, man. <laughs> Namco was like, oh crap, you know what? You know, here, here you go, Sony. We can do this for you too. We'll give you a Link type character, you know, just for you guys. Because, you know, since our version of Soul Calibur 2 sucks so bad, we're gonna give you this, you know, we're gonna make this awesome for you. So we'll give you these three new characters. Oh, I forgot to mention the last one. The last one was Setsuka. 
some woman who is, you know, wears Japanese clothing and she wears a robe, um, but she's not actually ethnically Japanese. She happens to be a white girl, you know, she's Caucasian. So uh, already that Namco slash Tekken influence, you know, that Sony feel to her is already there, you know. She is somebody you would find in a Tekken game. And gee, who was the game character that was exclusive on the Soul Calibur 2 version of the PlayStation 2? Hmm, Heihachi from the Tekken series? So another Tekken E character. Very, very freaking interesting. Anyway, that's how I feel about Soul Calibur 3. That's, uh, I just wanted to say that because that's the stuff that I missed from my previous rant. 